Previously, we discussed a particular kind of sentence pair, contradictories. There are two interesting basic principles which characterize certain relations between such sentences. The principle of excluded middle, P-E-M for short, and the principle of non-contradiction, P-N-C for short. We have already talked about the latter, let's turn to the former. This basic logical principle expresses a fairly intuitive fact. For any pair of contradictory statements, one must be true. For any proposition P and its contradictory not P, the formal statement of PEM is either P or not P exclusively. To make this more specific, recall our earlier lesson on the square of opposition. PEM justifies our statement of the contradictory opposition between A sentences and O sentences, or between E sentences and I sentences. By our earlier definitions, the truth of an A sentence implies the falsity of an O sentence, for instance. In other words, if an A sentence is true, then the opposite O sentence is false. We stress this as a conditional statement to make the target of PEM more precise. In particular, PEM does not target specific individual sentences, but pairs of contradictory opposites on the square of opposition. There is a principle called the principle of bivalence, establishing that any individual proposition is either true or false. Since it has a different target altogether, this is distinct from PEM. Let us look at another step-by-step -step example of PEM at work to further emphasize just how intuitively basic it appears to us in common cases. This time around, let's look at a proposition with the verb to be in the past tense to illustrate that PEM holds in straightforward sentences about the past as well. 1. Either dinosaurs were large on average, or they weren't. In the case of past events, as in the case of present ones, evaluating the truth of one is a matter of checking against the facts of the world to see if there's a correspondence between what was or is the case and the content of the proposition. It seems trivially true that either dinosaurs were large on average or they weren't. Whatever the relevant state of affairs indicates will make one of the two disjuncts true. Therefore, the entire expression, either dinosaurs were large on average or they weren't, will be true by virtue of one of the contradictories in the pair being true. So far, so good. What PEM is saying further is that generally, for any pair of contradictories, the result holds. 2. All dinosaurs were large. This example is a universal affirmative, an A sentence. Clearly enough, it is false. There were small dinosaurs. By the square of opposition, the falsehood of example 2 implies the truth of its contradictory opposite, namely, some dinosaurs are not large. This is obvious enough on the face of it, but we might reasonably ask a further question. Why should we believe that the implication holds? But otherwise, why should we think that the relation of contradictory opposition works in this way? The answer, PEM. The principle gives us reason to believe, it justifies, that contradictory opposition works exactly as we expect it to. In conclusion, the principle of excluded middle is one of the foundational principles of Aristotelian logic. Not only is it widely employed in logical models in our own times, but it is also basic to our day-to-day -day reasoning.